So it's late at night. It's midnight for me right now. You can see because it's dark outside. For people in the future, it used to be dark. Didn't happen all the time. When it was dark, that was only a temporary thing. I know now the world is blocked out in a never ending realm of darkness and humanity barely survives, but at, at some point, darkness was not a thing to be afraid of, that the night eaters would come out and attack you. It used to be just the time you went to sleep. Ugh, I don't want to get into it. Y you guys would be too sad. Anyways. Anyways, uh, I'm bored. I don't know. can't sleep. Streaming, I guess, is just not happening tonight. Uh, I kept trying to stream and just, nope, so... What I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit down here and I'm gonna draw the greatest character ever created of all time. You know him. You love him. Some would say he is the first true great American piece of canon. I know all of our fiction and literature and film and scientific achievements are contrasted against this unique and glorious figure in human society, and they are found wanting. Garfield, I'm drawing Garfield. I like Garfield. I don't know if I've told this story before. Garfield was the first comic I really loved as a kid, and it was the first thing I really, in some ways, I feel like it taught me how to read. I never really liked to read as a kid until I started reading Garfield, and then I would just read Garfield obsessively. So, unlike, the rest of the internet, where Garfield is sort of a joke, or uh, it's sort of ironically. I, my appreciation for Garfield is very uh, ironic, I guess. No. I don't even think the kind of ironic thing that people do with Garfield is that ironic. I think people... So, Garfield, I, I feel like the meme Garfield is somewhat compared to Shrek as a thing. That Shrek is like this sort of irony-soaked thing now where people make goofy jokes about it. But the thing about Shrek, guys, is I suspect that the people who like Shrek and the people who do the Garfield thing kind of legitimately like it, but are like adults now and they have to obfuscate that they enjoy a thing because that's just what we do as a society. <laughs> is we, like, we can't enjoy things legitimately anymore. We just, no, 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 no. Why would I, a grown man, enjoy the silly talking cartoon cat that, you no, know, I only like it ironically. That's why I spend hours of my life making art of it where Garfield is attacked. It turns into a Cthulhu monster or, or seemingly uh, is now like goth, I guess. I don't know. That's just kind of my opinion. I think people, I think, I don't know. It, I know Garfield is lame and cheesy and people are like, people are like, well, it's never been funny and eh, probably, I don't know, a lot of, but I don't know, there's something special. I think it's a fairly re relatable thing in a lot of ways. I think, am I defending Garfield? Am I like going, actually, this thing that we're all like is bad? Um, actually, it's good. I don't know. I, I have such affection for it. I have, I'm, but uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be like irony so, I don't know. I was very irony soaked in my young life and my old life and somewhat now. Why am I talking myself into circles? I have good memories associated with Garfield. I don't feel it's like the pinnacle of cartooning in the sense Pogo or uh, Calvin and Hobbes or something is like, but I don't know, it's dumb fun. And that's okay. Culture. See, I, okay, this is, this, uh, I as a, but it does leave me now that Garfield is ironically liked and people talk about it a lot. I have a lot of knowledge about the, the Gar Man that I have no use for, but I remember it all so obsessively. Do you guys want to know why Garfield hates Mondays? I can tell you there's an in-universe reason why Garfield hates Mondays. Uh, Garfield is... Um, so, the run... A lot of people... I, I've made this complaint before. A lot of people are like, well, John leaves on Monday. It's like, John doesn't leave on Monday. John's a cartoonist. He stays in all the time. That's why John is so lonely, because artists are innately lonely people. You must spend hours of your life slowly learning a skill, and you cannot leave or talk. It just doesn't exist. Anyways, no. So you're not going to believe this, because this is bizarre. What the, the running joke is that Garfield is super unlucky on Mondays. 
and something bad always happens, uh, comically bad will always happen to him on Mondays. That's why he hates it. That's the reason. It, 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 is, it is a bizarre, very strange joke where he's just like, unlucky on Mondays, and that's why he hates Mondays. It's not because he has to like, go to a job, it's because the universe conspires against uh, him to be uh, like, that you will have horrible luck on this day because presumably an ancient curse or something, that's the joke. I know that sounds weird. I know that Garfield being sad that John going to work would be a better explanation with more emotional resonance, but that's just the truth of the matter. I do think the Garfield show holds up a lot better. I love newspaper. I, I have great affection for newspaper comics, but I sometimes with newspaper comics, and I, I think newspaper comic people would agree with me, uh, the need to like, have to put out something every day, not all of them can be winners. I imagine it's quite difficult to come up with concisive, brilliant, and funny jokes every day. And sometimes you have to rely maybe just a little bit on tired old running gags. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't got any ideas. Let's just have him freak out over lasagna again. Fun fact, it, uh, if you're interested, fun fact, uh, lasagna was not meant to be Garfield's favorite food. Pizza was meant to be Garfield's favorite food. But Jim Davis explained in one of his many books that I own that uh, pizza is harder to draw, and so he, he drew lasagna instead. He picked lasagna, which as a young man caused me to go out and try lasagna for the first time because Garfield liked it. I, I have lived most of my life with the simple philosophy that if Garfield do this, well, then I must do this. I respect him for his style and his given. I respect him. Garfield is a true iconoclast. Unlike other cartoon cats that I could name, when Garfield is presented a thing, Garfield, Garfield will always go his own way. If you want like, fun Garfield stuff, I don't know. What else? Uh, I'm trying to remember like, fun facts that I read about Garfield that uh, from like, books, uh, compilation books that I read years ago when I was a wee child. Oh, uh, here's another one. Uh, Garfield, uh, at least according to Jim Davis, is not in, in fact named after the president, Garfield. He's named after the uh, Jim Davis's grandfather, whose name was Garfield, which is less uh, notable. I guess. In... I haven't seen the new movie yet, by the way. Uh... Oh, no, no, no! Wait, according to a YouTube video, I did... No, I haven't seen the new movie. I don't know, man. I'm an adult. I do think probably the best media that Garfield has produced is probably the animated show, which was quite fun. I, I, if I remember correctly, if I remember from my childhood, I remember thinking that the animated show was funny and quite funny, so... If you want Garfield operating at peak efficiency, the animated show is probably the place to go. Dave Barry did an intro once for the Garfield books where he got to hang out with Jim Davis. And Dave Barry, I first learned about from the TV show, and I didn't realize that Dave Barry was a real guy. In my head, Dave Barry, I don't know, it's still weird that Dave Barry to me is a real dude. And I'm like, oh, right. And it's like not a TV show. And the actor that they cast for Dave Barry, uh, was it, was that John Lanarkat? I'm th I think it was, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong about this. If I'm wrong about this, well, I'm wrong about it. Dave Barry sitcom. Henry Anderson! Oh, darn it, I knew it was a Night Court guy. I just picked the wrong one. Darn it! I was so cl Oh, darn it. My whole life is knowing random fun facts about things and going like, well... Oh, I knew it was somebody from Night Court. I can't believe I was like, oh, I can't believe I got the show. I just didn't remember which Night Courtian it was. That's so funny. I love Henry Anderson, man. He was so fun. What was I saying? Oh, right, that is a distinct memory. I think that's a distinct memory because that's the first time I realized that, I think that I realized that Dave Barry was a real person. I, I know, at least on here, nobody knows me, so why, why would it matter? But I, I know, at least to the two or three people that might dignify this with a watch, that I come off like a big superhero fan, which is very true, I am. 
But uh, my real first love was like, comedy. I love not I love funny things. I like that's where my uh, reference of kicked has his arms are crossed, and I struggle with that. Or maybe I don't. Maybe what, what do you, Sean? Why don't you try? Be bold, Sean. Be bold. Be adventurous. I cut out when I do these. I cut out uh, any time I like stutter or like, pause, and I can't think of anything to say. So be prepped for that. It looks like I'm talking like real smart and fast, or instead I got like I don't know. I don't know what to say. I was watching Lavender Town, the YouTuber. I like her. Some she, anyways. Uh, but I do legitimately like her. There's one or two times I've sort of disagreed with her on a, a few takes she's had, but um, nothing. And I thought she gave a really good piece of advice that I'm, as somebody who is like, uh, still trying to get a hang of drawing in many ways. I, I, I do try and avoid like depicting hands and I thought she had a good piece of advice that even if your hands are bad You should just draw them bad hands are better than no hands and I'm like dang it. She's right That's correct. I should just draw hands cuz it's like you just gotta get over that But they ruin what is otherwise a perfectly competent drawing and I, I struggle a little bit with the way Davis uh, or... Oh, do you think? There's no way in the world that Jim Davis actually sits down. I, I know for a fact he doesn't sit down and draw off, like the comics, Garfield comics anymore. I, I don't think he's looked at them or touched them in years. I'm sure he can he can approve for like. I was very heartened to hear that uh, I've 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 seen a few interviews with like, some cartoonists who are working, and all the cartoonists who met meet Jim Davis say he's just like, the nicest guy in the world. So I'm very heartened to hear that he's a like, dude. He's like, just a nice dude who seems happy to. Like, he invented the greatest cat that ever lived, and he's happy to just hang out and not hang out and let that ride, which I think is very nice. So it makes me happy to hear that, that he's like just apparently a sweetheart. So I, I am heartened to hear that the man who I considered my favorite writer as a child is not a, a douchebag, because uh, there's been a few people that I was quite a fan of uh, that uh, have not, uh, have turned, I don't know, that are apparently quite mean in real life. But you know, what, what can you do? That's why, if I can give young people a piece of advice, pick heroes that are dead. Don't pick anybody alive. Don't say that your hero is somebody alive. Pick somebody long dead, because they can't disappoint you. They can't say dumb stuff that makes you regret them being heroes, because you don't. If they're going to disappoint you, they already did, did it, and you can deal with that. That's my advice. That's the advice I give to the younger generation. There are no hero. There should be no heroes in life, only in death. A hero is forged only, only in the fires of the great beyond. I wanted to get epic with it, except Garfield, because Garfield can always be your hero. Emulate his. Life. There's this really weird book that uh, they put out that is honestly the most artistic thing I think Garfield has ever been part of. I, I think everybody would agree that it's the best. It's uh, called The Nine Lives of Garfield. If you ever get a chance, look that up, because it's, like, it follows Garfield th through his nine lives. And there's so many weird things in that book. I should probably do a full review of it, but I can just do this. Uh, so the idea is it follows Garfield through numerous generations of his life, and it's full of cartooning, full of weird storytelling choices. I believe there's an animated special also that tells slightly different stories, but... There's like one, to emphasize how weird it is, there's one story where Garfield is, a version of Garfield is possessed by a demon and kills a person. That's in a Garfield book. That's not in a creepypasta. That's in an officially produced Garfield book. Garfield just like murks a lady because a demon possessed it. And the art style changes all the time. And it's very, I, th I think it's Jim Davis doing a lot of art. It's like, Jim Davis going like, what if I was a super experimental artist and did all these weird things that I, maybe I've had in my head for a long time? And I appreciate that immensely. I think that's good that it exists. I'm sure other artists worked on it, but I, I appreciate that, a, you know, that there's a weird... It shows you how nice of a guy Jim Davis is. Jim Davis approved of the Garfield minus Garfield concept. He thought it was so funny, he let a book be published and made a few himself. That's nice, right? You wouldn't see like, Dilbert doing that. Or like, that's a canopy, uh, or oh, what's the other one? Uh, the classic music one that's awful. Uh, I, f I forget its name. You wouldn't see that, that guy doing that. There, there's a, I, 
I one of my favorite websites of all time is uh, the Comics Curmudgeon. If you've never seen the Comics Curmudgeon, you really should. Uh, gone to the Comics Curmudgeon, you really should. It's just a guy kind of riffing on old, not old. It's just him riffing on newspaper comics, and it's super funny. Not it's like nine chicken. Pete Lane. Oh, that one is just uh, trash. <laughs> that one, I try and be nice and go like, oh, there's good. Uh, oh, no, that one's just trash. I can't stand that one. I'll go to the bat for like, a lot of things, but uh, I, I have this friend and we've been debating on the merits of art. And I, I have this theory of art that a lot of, even if the art isn't good, it's worthy of interest because it, it is art or something. I don't know. It's worthy of discussion. Because even in like, the stuff you may dismiss as trite or boring, it, it's not, you shouldn't be like, you should look into it because there's always something interesting about art, I feel. Human made art. I'm getting into very, uh, there, there's boring. Uh, the, I'm getting into very tedious discussions with some people about humans and why humans are important. And I don't like this version of the future where I have to argue that humans are relevant and we should encourage humans and not machines. Cyberpunk didn't predict this, right? That um, we as a species would be like, screw humanity. I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking of the Deus Ex reboots where it's like, instead of under, oh man, I wish AI was on the thing. I wish I didn't have to keep having talks about AI, which just, I'm, I'm so burnt out on it. I don't like it. AI was fun to play with when it was kind of bad, and it was like, oh, this is goofy and fun, but now that it's gotten better, I'm not... Uh, uh, probably gonna cut this little part out. Garfield. I, I like newspaper comics, uh, even though they're kind of dying, but they may be dying, but they live on as like, web... Their uh, descendants are like web comics, and th those are going strong. I'm assured everybody who makes web comics are millionaires, right? I, I'm, I'm understanding the business correctly, that everybody who makes... Especially... Especially since uh, big money came into the webcomics industry and totally fixed everything, right? That made it good. I remember when, I don't know, it's like webcomics are, were used, uh, the fact that like, people were so, uh, don't, if, if I could give some advice from somebody who isn't, isn't successful at all in the industry, so what, what the hell am I talking about? But if I could give some people advice on like, just the curve of like, history and creative arts, never trust the big company that comes in and says that they're going to innovate and make it better. Never trust those guys, especially with art. When something used to be free flowing and kind of a wild westy sort of thing, uh, and then two or three big platforms come in and then that's where everybody goes. Don't trust those people ever. <laughs> They're gonna, cause it might be good initially. They're going to betray you and screw you over. That's just how things work. And that's how it's always worked. And that's how it will continue to work. You know, I saw one person argue with stuff like that. I found an interesting point of view. When these tech companies come out with like, these food things and stuff, uh, like delivery apps, and people are like, well, th the business model is unsustainable, and it is, but you should take advantage of it anyways because it's like for the first few years, they're just going to give you a bunch, they're going to give you like, really good discounts, so you should just take advantage of it. I hate Webtoon. I don't, some people really hate the webtoon style. Or, I don't really hate that, but I hate that this company came in and decimated what had been a fairly open, open place to express yourself. And now the only people that have dedicated webcomic things, there's probably guys who are still doing, guys and uh, gals and who are still part of the, still worth. There are probably still people out there who are uh, still doing the traditional, I, I have my own website, I'm just going to control that. And you guys are probably coming up, uh, but... He, I, web comics promised to be kind of a freeing place for a lot of comic creators, and it was, but then the jackasses came in and are trying to ruin it, and I resent that. I resent that. I resent that in the way that I resent that I, I resent Facebook or uh, Instagram or any place that used to be. I don't know any good websites to visit anymore. There used to be a million great websites that I could go to, and now you're, you're supposed to just go to these stupid platforms. Resent that. The past was better. Don't think about anything else in the past. The past was clearly better. But something was lost. I'm not one of those people like, hey, it's so good in my own time. But we lost something. I don't know what it is, but something used to work and then we stopped doing it. I'm gonna ink it because I'm scared of inking and I don't ink enough. And I signed up for a comics class recently. That is an exciting little development. Uh, the Art League here in Houston is doing a comic and graphic novel class. 
And I am super excited for that. It's something I, I my, my whole art journey starts because I signed up for one of those classes and I was like, and I, I'm hoping it'll motivate me in some way to start making comics. Because the whole, we are honest, the whole point of me trying to learn how to draw was because I wanted to make my own comic books. So I, I, I am psyched for this. This is something I'm looking forward to. To be like my hero, Jim Davis. Is that a joke or am I using sarcasm so I don't have to say the real thing? I'd love to. I know it's very rare. Even if it's just a webcomic, I'd, I'd love to be able to make comics for... I, I know I probably can't make a living off of it, but it'd be nice as a side hustle. I'm using those ter terminologies. I must... I hate, I hate those. I hate that sort of thing. It's a side hustle. No, it's a thing I'm doing because I enjoy doing it and it would be nice to make a little money off of it because money, because that's the way the world works. But it would be nice to have have that ability to keep doing it in some regard. I, I'm talking to people and it's like, I know somebody who is fairly successful as a writer in the industry. He's doing quite well and he wants to write a book. And I think I've been encouraging him too, but he wants to all this algorithmic stuff. And it's not, ideas come from anywhere, and I don't necessarily think it's wrong to go like, oh, what's popular today? Could I maybe do my version of that? I, I've, I've had that thought before, but anyways. Art is good because art is, these projects are good not because you can make money off of them. Money, I, I don't discredit for anybody trying to make money, but if your only goal is to make money off of these, I don't know. There's a lot, of e there's a lot of easier things in the world to do than becoming an artist and making money because nobody makes money off of art. It's, artists all have to have second jobs or something to pay 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 the way. It's very rare for an artist to their main job is art, so or writing or anything. Nobody makes money off of those. There's better ways. I actually, I'm gonna be honest. Whenever I hear hear that from people that they're just in this to make money, I think that's cope. I think people are coping. I think the reality of it is that they want to do this, but they can't justify to themselves that they they are pursuing this because it's scary and there's not oh, there's hope, but there, it's hard and it's difficult and most people fail. So it's like, well, I, I'm not doing this because I'm I'm not doing this. I'm doing this for money. Certainly, I'm not doing this because I'm putting my feelings out there and things I'm passionate about, and it would be heartbreaking if it went wrong and people didn't like it. So I, I'm not going to admit that I'm doing it for those reasons. I'll, I'll just say I'm doing it for money, and then that's it. You know, I, I don't... I've never once trusted a person who, who's told me that. I, I, I don't trust people who say that. I, I, I suspect that they... They need that kind of like level of like obfuscation to like be able to do it because it's it's a terrifying prospect otherwise. And you know, I, I maybe people to be fair, I, there are a lot of people who like are very into like. There are some people out there. I know, you know, and now I say that to people. You know, I've now made a generality, and people probably are not gonna like a million things are gonna come out. Or like you're wrong, but it's like you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't be into this specific thing if you weren't at least somewhat interested in it. Like, um, even if your your goal is to make money, the fact that you chose this to make money means that, like, you kind of have an innate interest in doing stuff like this. Like, I was reading about, well, there's a few scammers I was reading about, but I was, uh, I was reading about people who, like, this is true of things, but I was reading about, like, people who, like, make... I think counterfeit, like, uh, what is it, uh, little littlest pet shop things. Apparently there's a big counterfeit ring to that. And I was like, how do you even get into your head that you should do that? And it's like, well, clearly these are people who might be interested in this already. And they're like, oh, I could fake this easily. It's like, I don't think they're like, I don't think like, if you were like a real dedicated scammer, like you'd be like hawking like crypto bullshit and not like, uh, like if that's where you really want to make money, you'd be hawking like crypto stuff or like sending. <laughs> sending a thing to a crypto guy like hey can i get your password to your crypto and he's like sure sure yeah of course you can have my password hey i'm gonna hey uh i'm gonna send a uh i'm gonna create like um a thing that makes a billion dollars how are you gonna make a billion dollars i i didn't know you're gonna be like that dude i i didn't know you're gonna be like that you're so rude and mean you're right. I'm sorry. That's a ridiculous question to ask. Let me give you all my life savings. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now you're being a good dude. So 
Um, so when are you gonna make a million? Blocked, gone, disappeared forever. Definitely in Dubai. That's that's how these conversations go. Several of my friends have invested in crypto. I've tried very nicely to like suggest other ideas, but no. Nope. What can you do? Boy, this is. You know, I had a teacher who swore by these, so I'm I'm like, and I think they do end up looking good, but jeez, this takes forever to do. Oh my god. Probably not doing them right either. Yes, I know the big boy artists are like, yeah, he's doing it wrong. Right. I mean, I do care. I, I, I am always trying to get better, but... Oh my god, I always forget forget how, like, how much work this is. I'm like, I drew the thing in pencil. Why do I have to do it in ink? Does it, does it look better is the answer. It just looks better. That's why I'm doing it in ink, is because it looks better. Are you a big boy who wants to, like, actually do art right? Or are you, like, just a do spend the rest of your life like making pencil drawings garfield other fun facts about garfield that i know i don't know how popular these videos are by the way i just i don't know i just do them because it's like i don't have any other ideas other fun facts uh they're quite rambly i'm aware but it's just me sitting here like i did try and get like some people on but it, it's too late at night for, for i think most people so which is fair it's, they have lives that they have to get up to and do things I'm like, I can just, hey, can you not sleep and like hang out with, with me? Dr. Liz, the veterinarian. Her name isn't Elizabeth. It's Lizard. That's her name. That is in canon. That is a real thing. I say this because in the first Garfield movie with, where they had this character, they established immediately that her name was Elizabeth. And that's how I knew that movie was going to be bad. That's when I was like, oh, it's not Lizard. It is in the comics. This a crime has been committed in this theater, and the fact that Odie wasn't animated also bummed. I remember when I was a kid. Uh, this is a real story. When the, one Garfield movie coming out, major event in my life. That movie came out. I was more excited for that movie than anything else I'd ever. Like, big time. Oh my god! I talked about it for maybe a year. I told you, I was obsessed with Garfield. Not maybe I hyped it up a little bit in my head, but also it's not a good movie. It's quite bad. That might have started my falling out a little bit with Garfield. I, 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 I notably stopped enjoying it as much after that. But I remember as a kid that I thought the plot didn't make sense when I read it uh, in books and stuff. Because the plot had come out and it's like the whole story is like they kidnap Odie. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. Like, no, no. They, why would they want specifically Odie? And I was like, so when I explained it to people, because I, 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 I had to evangelize for, for the Garfield movie, because I had the books. I had the novelizations. I don't know if this is still a thing, but it, it used to be in the olden days, there would be, when a movie was coming out, there would also be novelizations. I had the novelizations for Garf Garfield, so, because I was still living in the Middle East, so like the movie wasn't coming out anytime soon. Had to wait for the summer to go to America so I could see it. But I had the books, and I didn't understand the plot. I thought it didn't make sense, because it's like, how would this be interesting? So I fudged it a little bit. I, I changed some of the plot definitions to make it sound a little bit more interesting in my head. Partly because I was like, oh, I'm a kid. I don't get what they're saying, because this doesn't seem to be make a lot of sense and isn't Garfield. By the way, um, in my opinion, uh, I don't know if Garfield movies work as a thing. Or it's like, I don't know, like, keep trying to make it, like, sort of inventory. I don't know. Is that what, I don't know. Like, the, I, of course I saw the trailer. I believe me reacting to the trailer is the most viral, like, the biggest hit I have on this channel is me just reacting to the trailer. Because I was just so out of ideas. I was like, I guess I'll just react to this trailer, even though I don't really do that sort of stuff. And that's the th number one thing people watched on this channel, and I have never surpassed it video no that's not true but a uh, short long form video like this is going to clearly be the uh oh come on this is clearly going to be the hit and people are going to love this and they'll say how great it is and a million people will watch it but anyways garfield i don't know if garfield totally works as like like comic uh it, it, it's it's more of a slice of life thing oh, if i could get richard link later in to direct a garfield movie that, that would work i don't know i think when do movie do movies do low stakes anymore? Do you think about that? Why why aren't there low stakes movies anymore? Where it's just like I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, what, what what would I adapt to Garfield? Because Garfield occasionally does these sort of long arcs, not long arcs, but they occasionally do things. 
I remember one I liked as a kid was Garfield and the gang getting stuck in a, an umbrella, I believe, for weeks on end. It was just like Garfield. More and more people would get stuck in this umbrella. Could you do that as a movie? Just Garfield, John, Odie, Nermal. Garfield's, I guess I should say John's neighbor, but Garfield's the one in charge of the house. Just all of the side characters <laughs> getting trapped in an umbrella. I think it was an umbrella. Or, uh, there's the there's the infamous one where Garfield wakes up and his house is totally uh, that there's nobody in the house and it's like nobody's lived in that house for years and it's like oh it's one it, it turns into actually Garfield has been dreaming this whole time and he's just an abandoned cat in a lost house it's a freaky comic and it scared me as a kid but it's also like it turns Garfield into one of those one of the worst things on the internet is like, oh uh theory the characters were dead the whole time. That's right. Sweet and innocent cartoon. Actually character dead. Everybody dead. It's a hallucination of one character. I hate those so much because there it, it's not that dissimilar from like, everything is just a dream interpretations and it's like everything can just be a dream. This is like we're just making shit up. All of this isn't real. It's all imaginary. Although there is something very infuriating about just the dream endings. I don't know. That is a weird thing where it's like, it's made up. We're watching a made up thing that doesn't exist. But when they do the, oh, this was just a dream thing. It is absolutely infuriating. No, fuck you. Don't no, flip you. Don't do that. When theoretically it shouldn't be, but it's all, but it, it, it's a betrayal of the audience because it's like, oh, the story we were watching, nothing happened. There, nothing existed. There was no stakes. It was all just made up garbage nonsense uh and you were a fool for watching it and it's like well we we want to watch a story where there's stakes i guess and people still want stakes in their story even if it is just um even if there is even if we must accept that nothing actually existed and the story is fictional you have when you walk into a story the promise is that even though it's made up, we will, the audience and the creator will both endeavor to try and make it feel real. And one, if one violates it, then the other violates it. Um, there's not, it's not a good criticism that, well, this thing would never happen in real life. Well, but a lot of things never happen in real life. Who, who gives a shit about that? And I'd like to end this recording. I'm a little bit tired of this, but I'm determined to finish it. I mean, though, I think I screwed some stuff up, but I guess we are finishing it. Like this, I can tell I screwed up. I think the face is a little bit off. Maybe I'll do a challenge where I try and draw. I know about flipping and I should just flip the darn thing. But I didn't do that and that's just the life we're gonna have to lead. We're just gonna have to agree that I didn't do that. Boop. Okay. Being quiet. I know this video's not gonna be successful. These... No, that's not true. I, one of these videos was successful and it's because I did a Smiling Friends video. That's, that's why it was successful. Theoretically, I could do nothing but Smiling Friends videos, and that would be a very big hit, but I don't want to do that. Well, partly because there's just not enough content to talk about. There's not that Smiling Friends is bad. No, I think it's quite a fun show, but it's like there's just not... There's only been two seasons of it, so it's like I don't got, I don't got a lot to talk about after a certain point. Two, I don't, I don't want this channel to be that. I'm a fan of that show, so I am, I'm happy to talk about it. I was thinking of maybe going deep into like, C-Lab 2020 uh, as a show. I rewatched some of those episodes. That that stuff is pretty fun still. Bizarro! I rewatched the first few episodes. Like, the first episode is so amazing because it's like, oh, yeah, we're, all, we're all about to die. Uh, sure, that's cool. Anyways, let's talk about what would happen if we become robots. I love that show so much. Jabba the Hutt. It's the last one I watched was like, I think MC Chris. Man. I don't want to do, I don't want this to just be Adult Swim content, like me talking about Adult Swim shows, because apparently because Adult Swim, the corporate entity, as much as I love the creative entity, the corporate side of it is doing some kind of quite sleazy things, and I'm not a huge fan of that. And even though it's like, I, it's, you should always support the artists, not the company that the artists work for. Man, I love, to, oh man, I love Adult Swim so much. My favorite channel of all time. I don't want them to be the bad guys in a story, even though I know they are being the bad guys in this story, which is shitty. Man, pay your creators. Don't be weird and shitty and screwing everybody over. But there's, I don't know. I love so many of the shows on there. I, don't know. I, I hate, I'm hoping it's like evil suits within the machine and not really the people themselves. There's all, that's probably naive. Right? That's probably naive. There's always... Which is depressing. You can tell I'm getting a little bit tired, right? 
Where you'll find me beneath the sea land. Other Garfield fun facts. Garfield wants... No, what are some Garfield fun facts? Um, did you guys follow that whole situation? Oh my god. That whole situation with the uh, guy who started that Garfield restaurant up in Toronto? That was... What a wild ride that was. I don't know. Maybe my thing about... You, you wouldn't be doing this. Um, god, it was just a lot. What's so funny about that is, uh, if you hadn't heard had the story about it, basically this tech guy, this kind of techie bro dude, he bought the rights to, he bought, he got a license to start a Garfield themed restaurant, which is not a terrible idea. But he, he, he brought this whole weird tech bro attitude to it, which is always a bad idea. And uh, so, but he got into his head fundamentally that he would be the star of it and people would be really interested in what he had to say and do which is not you're running a family restaurant dude for kids are going to be interested in this they're going to want to go to like a garfield themed restaurant for their birthday they're not going to want to hip adults aren't want, going to want to go to like this place anyway so there's this app he, he created an app and it was going to be revolutionary and he had this whole orange pizza and garfield shaped lasagnas and the food nobody liked the food and it was bad and he weirdly made it all about himself, which was not appreciated by anybody. And he blamed, he fell into weird conspiracy mongering pretty quickly. I mean, I should do a video about it. I, I've, look it up though. Um, it's pretty fascinating. Should be the one telling you about it, but I don't remember everything about it and I'm getting a tiny bit tired. And I'm mostly done with this stupid drawing. There's my stupid Garfield drawing. I did it, I'm happy I'm done. What about his hands? Shut up about his damn hands. Oh, they're as inked as they've ever been. I'm tired. I want to... It's funny. This is going to be 20 minutes and you won't see me just go like light slowly dim out of my eyes. There we go. Now his hands are complete. Now it's beautiful and perfect and everybody loves it. Like, follow, and subscribe. Ugh.